Rebecca Balcarcel, and I want to share with you one of my favorite poems. It's by Linda Paston, and it comes from this book, uh, The Imperfect Paradise. And there's a little story behind this. Linda Paston actually visited my community college when I was a student at the community college. And um, I actually bought this book then, and I got her autograph. <laughs> and she read this poem that I'm going to share with you called to a daughter leaving home. And I have to say that it was her visit and her reading event that changed my life. And I moved in a new direction from that point on. I had been on a track to go into psychology and I switched my focus to literature and writing. And uh, here I am. And I actually met her again later at a conference and I told her, Miss Paston, you changed my life when you came to my community college and, and did this reading of The Imperfect Paradise in this poem. She has many books out now, um, but this was quite a long time ago. <laughs> and so this was her new book at the time. So this is called To a Daughter Leaving Home. And you can find it online, but um, I'll just read it to you out of my, out of my book. When I taught you at eight to ride a bicycle loping along beside you as you wobbled away on two round wheels, my own mouth rounding in surprise when you pulled ahead down the curved path of the park, I kept waiting for the thud of your crash as I sprinted to catch up while you grew more, sorry, while you grew smaller, more breakable with distance pumping, pumping for your life, screaming with laughter, the hair flapping behind you like a handkerchief waving goodbye. So um, this is a lovely tribute to the daughter. It's obviously in the voice of the mother. Um, and we can imagine that it's actually Linda Paston, but it, it can be like an imaginary moment. Um, you know, the poem is really fiction even if it has pieces of nonfiction woven throughout. And, you know, Linda Passman is a mother. But um, in any case, in the world of the poem, there's a mother talking or a parent talking. And the title tells us, To a Daughter Leaving Home. So we understand immediately that this whole episode that the poem talks about is on the occasion of the daughter leaving home. So the daughter has grown up, the daughter is going maybe to college, maybe to be married, maybe moving across the country for a job or something, but moving out of her original home, her family home for the first time. So why does the poet then launch into this memory or the, the speaker, the, the parent person launches into this memory of when the girl was eight? Well, obviously, there was this moment when she was eight that echoes this moment now when she's leaving home, a moment of new independence and new distance from the parent. When I taught you at eight to ride a bicycle. So uh, you can picture the parent kind of running awkwardly beside the bicycle, loping along beside you on two round wheels. And notice there's a lot of roundness in this poem the round wheels, and then right after that it says, my own mouth rounding in surprise. Oh, she's doing it. You know, she's riding, she's going. Um, she's not falling yet. <laughs> and there's the, so the round wheels, the mouth rounding, and then eventually we have a reference to the curved path of the park. So my own mouth rounding in surprise when you pulled ahead down the curved path of the park. So we have curves, rounding, and she's on a bicycle. It reminds me of the cycle of life itself, how there's birth and growth. There's a natural time, a natural season for a young person to gain independence and to get new skills. And a bicycle is a big moment for a kid. This is when you have such newfound freedom, like you can go so much further on a bicycle than you would on a tricycle. Um, and I mean, you could walk a long way, but a bicycle gets you there fast. So um, 
a kid often feels like this is the first real taste of freedom and independence. But the parent is surprised, like, oh, you know, she's really doing it. She's really going away from me. So there's a bittersweetness there. Pride, my child is learning, growing, and getting this new skill of riding a bike. And, of course, this echoes my child is growing and going away from home. But at the same time, I'm, I'm sad because the child doesn't need me in, anymore, not in the way they did before. Um, and when the, the woman goes off to, you know, into the world, she is leaving home and, and she doesn't need the parent in the same way. Of course, you know, the parent-child relationship is lifelong, but... The relationship does change, and it scoots into more of an equal partner friendship type of relationship. Um, depends on the family, but uh, but there's a bittersweetness about the changing role of the parent. So let's see where we went down the curve path of the park. I kept waiting for the thud of your crash as I sprinted to catch up. So the parent is still in that protective mode, like oh, just in case you fall, I should be there. Uh, you know, if you cry, I should be right there to hug you or, or brush off your scrape or something. Um, but it turns out that, that, that that didn't happen. While you grew smaller, more breakable with distance. And this is a lovely um, way to describe. Uh, it's physically accurate. You know, something at a distance is smaller. But the idea that she's more breakable the further away she is. This is the parent's worry for her safety. Uh, the parent's love, wanting to protect. Uh, and of course, the further away the child is, the less likely the parent is to be able to help, right? And this is true of the going away from home as well, like moving to college or to a new city or something. The, the parent will not be right down the street or even right across town to help if needed. So the parent feels, ah, you know, more nervous, a little more worried, um, hopeful that the child is okay, but wishing, ah, you know, I wish I could be there to help you if you needed me. So more breakable distance, pumping, pumping for your life. And this is a line I enjoy because for your life, it's true. We must be independent to have a true life, you know, to have a, a fulfilling life. We can't just stay sheltered and we can't even stay in like a very small world. We need to expand, right? We need to not just grow um, internally, well, definitely internally, but part of how our internal growth happens is by encountering things in the world, people, challenges skills that we want to acquire. This is the new um, horizons that we're, we want to explore. And of course, this is necessary. So the parent feels a pang of sadness, but at the same time knows that it's necessary. The child must find her own life. And this is how you do it, by riding a bike, by going off into you know, leaving home in what, whatever way that is. So pumping for your life. And of course, pumping refers to the pedaling of the bike. Screaming with laughter. So there's a line break here that is hard to see for you, but um, the word screaming is followed by a break and then a new line begins with laughter. So it's almost like the anxiety of the parent is on the page right there, screaming, she's screaming, uh-oh, wait, it's with laughter. So I'm worried, but now I'm reassured. Ah, yes, of course, it's all fine. She's laughing, she's enjoying herself, hair flapping behind you, like a handkerchief waving goodbye. We maybe don't say goodbye with handkerchiefs anymore, but there was a time when um, people would get on an airplane or on a boat especially and pull a little handkerchief out of their sleeve and then, you know, waft it in the wind and wave goodbye this way. And this was how people would, you know, say goodbye uh, as they went off on a big trip. For example, 
uh, you know, across the ocean or something. So the handkerchief was a goodbye symbol, and it was also used with trains. So it's a little bit old-fashioned for us, but um, in fact, do I even own a handkerchief? I, I think maybe I do, but, um, you know, we use Kleenex <laughs> instead of handkerchiefs. But um, the handkerchief was handy for waving goodbye, and it would, um, you know, be visible in the breeze uh, for longer than just the hand waving, you know. So she uses that image um, and compares the handkerchief. It's, it's really her hair. So I guess she's comparing the hair to a handkerchief. The hair is flapping in the breeze like the handkerchief. And so the hair is, is the symbol of goodbye. But of course, remember, this is from a memory where the child's only eight. So it's like that whole thing was a big dress rehearsal for the poem's occasion, which is, to a daughter leaving home. So starting at eight with the bicycle, that was practice. And now here we are at the moment where the daughter really is leaving home as a young woman, a young adult, ready to start her life. Well, I hope you enjoy To a Daughter Leaving Home by Linda Paston. You can find it online easily. Um, you can even find her reading it, I think, which, which is cool. So I hope you had a good time with me. Be sure to like the video if you actually liked the video. <laughs> and I'd love it if you'd subscribe too. Thanks so much. We'll do this again soon.